This video describes the version of a revenue management model used commonly by hotels, airlines, and other service organizations. In the current model, a hotel has two types of rooms, 85 regular rooms and 40 luxury rooms. And the model concerns reservations for these rooms on a typical night. The basic problem is to book just enough rooms so that there will be high occupancy, but to limit overbooking. As you can see from the input section, the rooms have different rates, there are maintenance costs for the rooms that are occupied, and there are overbooking costs for reservations that cannot be satisfied because of full occupancy. The expected demands for rooms are slightly greater than the hotel's capacities, but certain percentages of these reservations are canceled at the last minute. Also, some customers with regular reservations are willing to pay the higher price to upgrade to luxury rooms if no regular rooms remain, and similarly, some customers with luxury reservations are willing to downgrade to regular rooms. The hotel's ultimate decision variables are the reservation limits in row 12. These put caps on the numbers of reservations the hotel will book for the two types of rooms. In this video, they are fixed at the values shown. Actually, these values, 143, were found by Risk Optimizer. It turns out that they maximize the hotel's expected profit. The logic of the model is captured in rows 15 to 22. To understand it better, it is useful to toggle at Risk's dice button to random so that you can see different scenarios. The demands are first generated from the Poisson distribution. Then the numbers of reservations taken are constrained by the reservation limits. Next, the binomial distribution is used to generate the numbers of cancellations. And the reservations after cancellations are found with subtraction. Next, the numbers of rooms occupied before upgrades or downgrades are constrained by the hotel's capacities. Now I will press the F9 key a few times to generate a scenario where upgrading or downgrading is not only possible, but is actually done. Here is such a situation. The number of reservations for regular rooms is greater than capacity. So some of these customers might be willing to upgrade. This number is generated with a binomial distribution in cell D20. However, the number who are able to upgrade is still constrained by the hotel's capacity. In the situation shown here, two customers actually upgrade. Finally, the numbers of rooms occupied are found by addition, and the number of customers overbooked is either zero or the number of customers with reservations who don't have rooms they want. The outputs are all straightforward, and they are all designated as at-risk outputs. In addition, a number of at-risk statistical functions are used to find summary measures of the outputs, but these aren't meaningful until the simulation is run. Now I will run the simulation for 5,000 iterations. Here is the histogram of the profit. Note that because all random inputs have discrete integer value distributions, the histograms of the outputs are shown by default as discrete distributions. Because profit is essentially a continuous variable, you might prefer to show continuous histograms instead, as I will do now.
However, the discrete version works well for overbooking costs. For example, each overbooked luxury customer costs $250. So this histogram indicates that from zero to three, luxury customers were overbooked in the 5,000 iterations, with zero being by far the most likely value. Going back to the profit distribution, you might wonder why it is skewed to the left. The basic reason is that the reservation limits and the hotel's capacities put other limits on the amount of profit the hotel can obtain. And because expected demands are fairly high, the hotel does about as well as possible most of the time. But in the unlikely cases where demands are quite low, revenues are also quite low, and these outcomes lead to the long left tail of the distribution. 